Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to another episode of Shanka Show – Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие мальчики и девочки! В эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. And today we're gonna talk about house plants in the Soviet Union – домашние растения в Советском Союзе. So a couple months ago, Ruben Franzen, 1812, uh, posted this question. Okay, this might sound super boring. Well, it's okay, because a lot of my videos are long and boring, according to some of my viewers. But could you do a video about house plants in the Soviet Union? And I promise that I will add this topic to my list. So today we're going to talk about house plants. It's kind of funny, but when I think about house plants in my family, there's one image always comes to my mind. It's the day of moving, when we moved from our small tiny apartment to our three-room cooperative apartment, and my father couldn't find a truck, so he ended up uh, bringing his buddy driver who drove city bus called Liaz, L-I-A-Z. And that's how we moved our belongings, although we didn't have a lot of stuff because it was a small one-room apartment. But during this move, my job was to keep an eye on our house plants because we had a pretty tall cactus and some other plants. And my mom was afraid that I can tip over during the move. So that's what I had to do. I was uh, sitting and holding these house plants together, preventing them from falling and spilling the dirt. There are a couple of important things you need to keep in mind uh, thinking about house plants in the Soviet Union. First of all, location. Most of the Soviet Union, it's like Canada. It's located so much up north, has long cold winters, short, pretty cold summers. So of course that affects what kind of house plants you can have. And then of course, are we talking about house plants in the Soviet apartments in the cities? Are we talking about house plants out in the villages in people's own homes. For example, my grandparents didn't have a single house plant in their house in northern Ukraine, and I understand why they spent all summer out in their garden taking care of potatoes, beets, onions, everything else. So after that, they had probably zero desire to take care of more plants indoors. And if we talk about Soviet cities dwellers, you need to keep in mind that they had no choice which way their apartment were oriented. For example, you can always face north or west, you know, or east, because apartments were built without thinking like, oh, we need to have it oriented so people have an adequate amount of sunshine. So you could be facing north, there will be nothing really growing on your windows. And of course, you need to keep in mind that most Soviet apartments were pretty small. Standard was nine square meters, so it's about 100 square feet per person, so 10 by 10. And quite often it could be way less if you live in a communal apartment or uh, dorms. So having an apartment so tiny, there was really not enough floor space to have, you know, large, big plants. So most Soviet people kept smaller size house plants, usually located on the window cells. Fortunately, our apartments had pretty deep window cells, so you could easily fit quite a few flower boxes or flower containers. So here's the picture of typical Soviet era apartment. It's obviously a living room. I'm not sure if it's a one room apartment, it had several rooms, but it's a definitely a living room, July Komnata, because it has a big wall unit and TV. This apartment has a balcony because if you look at the window to the left, there is actually a door that you can go out on the balcony and there's a small house plant that sits on the windowsill. But obviously that house plant is not a part of apartment decoration because the view is blocked for so-called tul. I had to look it up in English and translation is tul. 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 So that was a standard window treatment in Soviet apartments. You had tul, tul, and then you have drapes. And most of the time, Soviet people didn't really care if the carpet matched the drapes, but in this case, it's definitely carpet matches the drapes. <laughs> okay, moving on. So having such treatments on the windows, tool and the drapes created a problem. Every time you need to water the plants, you need to be extremely careful moving away tool because if you have a large cactus or some other plant, it can snag on the tool and then you pull the plant down and falls on the rug, it creates a big mess. So that's kind of you learn as a small kid to be extremely careful moving 
window treatments because you can knock down the plants. Okay, now we can talk about the most popular house plants in the Soviet Union. Самое популярное домашнее растение в Советском Союзе. The most popular house plant in the Soviet Union was aloe. Or as we say in Russian, aloe. And I'm not sure how many of you are surprised, but I actually had to double check. Just to verify, because when I thought about house plants in the Soviet Union, the first plant came to my mind was aloe. Aloe. There's nothing sexy about that plant. I don't recall ever seeing it bloom. I don't know if it blooms at all. But that was extremely practical plant. First of all, because aloe juice we used to cure running nose. And I know it sounds bizarre, but that's what my mom would do and many other parents. You ripped a leaf from aloe, you squeezed the juice, and then you just do uh, drops in the person's nose. It makes you sneeze like crazy. But it definitely helped with runny nose or stuffed nose. But you could be sneezing like 15 minutes non-stop. If anyone is curious, you can try it. But that was the main reason why Soviet people kept aloe in every apartment. And of course, aloe plants are pretty hardy. They don't require a lot of watering. They just like a lot of sun. So everyone had aloe plant in their apartments. Number two Soviet house plant was gerany. Gerany. Geranium. Number three house plant was fialki. Fialki, the violets. Number three was Sanseveria, which in Russian they call it Shuchi Hvost, the pike tail. Number five was Ficus, Ficus. And that plant was one of those that can grow really big. So usually people had it on a separate small table or sitting on the floor. Ficus. And in this famous Stalin era socialist realism art called The New Apartment, you could see the ficus sitting on the floor. Another popular flowering house plant was primula, and it's the same word in Russian, primula. And of course, we must mention cactuses. Those were <laughs> everywhere. They were easy to maintain. They were looking cool, kind of give this exotic look to your apartment. My family, as I mentioned, had several of those. This bright green cactus on this photo, I believe that's the one I had in my little room, and one day it bloomed. It had this cool looking purple hairy flower, and I was so excited, but then I discovered that flowers smelled like rotten meat, and I couldn't wait till it's done blooming, but that was just one big single flower. Another popular exotic plant in the Soviet apartments was Kalanhoi, or Widow's Thrill. My family had that, and I remember it was so cool because it produced little tiny plants on the edges of its leaves. Apparently it's originally from Madagascar, and it's another hardy plant that didn't require a lot of uh, watering. And if I recall correctly, Kalanhoi juice was used same way as the aloe juice, we used it as a nose drops. Another popular cactus in the Soviet Union was so-called Abizyani Hvost, monkey tail. Their official name is Hilde Wintera Collademon Nonis. And those, of course, look super cool and they definitely look like monkey tails and looks like they originally came from South America. And another popular cactus was what they called in the West Christmas cactus. We called it Cactus Dicabrist because it bloomed only once in December. And of course, the Soviet people decorated their windows and tables with seasonal flowers or in the fall with branches that had colorful leaves like you see at this picture. This socialist realism art shows winter days somewhere in the Soviet Union and what looks like you have some cactuses on the window and five-story Akhrushchevka apartments across the street, kids playing and some clothing being air dried in the winter. There's another example of the window art. This one is from 1959. It's called Bouquet Patsnezhnikov, the snowdrops bouquet. And once again, just a seasonal flower that sits in the window. This is an interesting picture from 1961. Russian title is в башне циферной школе, so it's like a school office. So here you have a large plant sitting by the window. And I only can tell you that's in the winter because they have a double windows installed right now. So back in the day, and it probably was not only in the Soviet Union, but they had a single window in the summer, and when it gets cold, there will be a second frame installed, so like a double window to keep a uh, room warmer, better insulated. This art is from 1958. It's called Na Verandia on the patio. So there's a lady, so that's sometimes in the summer, 
working on some uh, sewing project and she has seasonal metal flowers in a jar. There's a 1976 picture called Yul, July, and here we have flowers on the table and some more flowers on the window. Really nice, warm, cozy picture. 1984 art before the flight, Pirit Palotam. So here you see there's no plants on the window because it's the office, but there's a little plant on the table. And of course, there's a couple of AN2 Kukuruznik airplanes getting ready for takeoff. Another window art from 1940, and that's called Primula plant. Another window art from 1950 called Leta Summer, and it's a classic, one of the most popular summer plants to decorate your windows, of course, Sirene lilacs. My mom sent me this photo in May of 2015 and as you see she has lilacs on the table. I found this picture extremely interesting. It looks like socialist realism art but not really. So that's your standard view from the standard Soviet apartment. You have a teenage girl sitting on a balcony listening to some popular music on her lawn play and her younger sister is holding a cat and there's a small uh, flowers plant uh, sitting on the windowsill and the view of other apartments. <laughs> I almost forgot I found this photo for you guys and after you're done staring at my stupid smile and my stupid ugly birth control glasses, you see there's a large plant in the background that's only friend of mine who had a huge plant in their apartment. They planted a seed from the lemon. So they had a wild lemon tree and they waited year after year for that plant to bloom and produce more lemons, I guess to make lemonade. But it never bloomed, never produced any lemons, but they always had this giant tree in the front of their window. Here's another interesting socialist realism art. It's not Christmas, my friends. It's a New Year Eve. You have a New Year tree, not the Christmas tree. You have a couple of bottles of champagne on the table. So definitely that's December 31st, guys. And the girl is uh, waving to someone or just making a imprints with her warm hand on the frozen window and you see there is a little plant next to her, I bet you it's aloe. And another little detail, that small chair has a Russian Olympic symbol, little Misha, little bear. And of course you have a rug on the wall and another rug on the floor that definitely matches the drapes. There's another interesting art called June 22nd. So that's June 22nd, 1941 when Nazi Germany attacked Soviet Union and there's a little plant on the windowsill otherwise all you see just the German bombers ready to bomb although German bombers never flew that low but that's quite an interesting art right there. Here's another fine example of plants in the window Soviet era art and once again a kid is holding his hands against the glass and I think they just like to feel how cold it is. I actually like this picture a lot. And of course, a lot of people had flower boxes on their balconies. My family had a couple and mostly people grew flowers there. We had to throw our flower boxes away after Chernobyl blew up in April of 1986. And then when my dad got hold of the dosimeter, he, <laughs> he didn't like what the flower boxes contained. So we threw them away together in dirt and the boxes. I took this photo sometimes around 2014 maybe while we visited uh, my mother's village. At that time my mom didn't have her own house yet so we stayed with her relative. And as you see she has a couple of those flower plants in her window. And I believe those are um, geraniums. Here's another photo I took in Ukraine about 10 years ago. So this is veranda patio of my brother's in-laws or ex-in-laws. And as you see they have a couple of cactuses sitting by the window on the right side. <laughs> so now we see the house plants from the outside. I took this photo, I believe, in 2002. I uh, had kind of like this project going on, uh, I called Windows of Ukraine, and it's one of those pictures. I am more was interested to show outside treatment of the windows, how they used to do it in Ukraine and in Russia, but also I caught a couple of plants sitting on the windowsill, and behind you see there's a tool and then of course drapes. And there's another picture from the same series, Windows of Ukraine. And once again, you see flowers and you see tool behind it. But there's something about this picture. When I look closer, those flowers turn out to be fake plastic ones. And I think that house was abandoned. That's why they still look green and pretty. And this picture I wanted to keep for the last, presented as a dessert. 
here you see a lot of interesting things on this window cell. Of course, you see the kerosene stove on the left. Then you see plant number one, which is a yellow onion growing out of the small glass jar. And there's another plant growing inside of the jar. So let's talk about that. Since you couldn't buy green onions as well as other fresh veggies in the wintertime in the Soviet Union, a lot of families grew green onions out of their yellow onions. So that's pretty much everyone had on their kitchen. This is more modern photo. We use glass jars or glass cups and then you just plant and put the bottom of the yellow onion in the water. Eventually start growing roots and then the green onions start growing. Then you just uh, trim it to eat and, or use in your salad. So that's uh, another extremely useful uh, house plant of the Soviet Union, yellow onions. So what the heck is floating inside of the three liter glass jar. In Soviet Union and in modern Russia we call it China Grib, tea mushroom. And I was shocked when I tried to find a translation into English. China Grib is what you guys are calling kombucha and I was so shocked because now it's on every corner here in America, kombucha this, kombucha that. But we've been drinking this kombucha juice or whatever that uh, tea mushroom was producing for years. It was known and cultivated in those jars in the Soviet apartments in the 70s and in the 80s. My family also had this China grip kombucha for a while, but not for a long time. And I don't remember, we just didn't like the taste or just it died on us. But, but I remember for a while we had that jar sitting on the windowsill as well. Okay, my friends, it's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this story about house plants in the Soviet Union. And if you'd like to YouTube to notice this video and show it to other people, please don't forget to comment, to like, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.